my goodness. I simply love my job. Welcome uh, to the number one station in the nation, GMAP Broadcast Network, GMAP1.com, the number one station in the nation. Yours truly, Pastor Kevin, doing what I love. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudettes, I love what I'm doing. And right now is a special time because, you know, I always, always get excited when I have individuals stop by and, you know, kind of chat with me and tell me who they are, what they're doing and, you know, all that great stuff. And right now I am honored, honored, privileged, and I'm blessed to be able to present to you one of our featured authors on the GMAP broadcast network, GMAP1.com. Dr. Barbara Reynolds is here live with me on the show, and I am not going to procrastinate at having her join us on today. Good afternoon, Barbara. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Pastor Kevin. It is an honor to be with you. Your whole aura is, is infectious. Your energy is, uh, flows and, and revs people up. Woo. And I'm, I'm excited just to seeing you, you know, right here where you are. Yeah, I've talked to you a lot on the telephone, and, um, but to see you again is wonderful. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, I truly mean it when I tell people I'm doing what I love because I love what I'm doing. And I tell and we you, need you doing what you're doing. I you. know that's right. You know what? I am so excited. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you for number one. I appreciate you for being here with me this afternoon. And I also appreciate you for accepting the invitation to be a part of our broadcast network family as one of our featured authors. I am grateful. And I want you to do me a kind favor, if you don't mind. I want you to take time out. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. Who is Dr. Barbara Reynolds? Okay. Well, I was born in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I grew up there. Um, I graduated from Ohio State University. Moved to Chicago and became one of the first black female writers for the Chicago Tribune. I worked at Ebony Magazine. Um, moved on from Chicago to Washington, D.C. to cover the uh, urban policy at the White House. Then became uh, an editor uh, at USA and columnist for 13 years. That's my, my uh, that's one part. The other part of me is, is mostly uh, why this book is, is is here, because I'm also a born again ordained minister who moves by the spirit and loves the Lord. Mm. And I think that's about, and I have a son, two sons really, who I'm quite proud of. My son here with me, John Eric Reynolds, and um, a son in London, uh, Dr. Keith McGee. So mm. that's, that's about it. Ooh, I am oh, so I'm excited. Ready. I forgot to say, my last book, I've written eight books, and my last book was uh, on Coretta Scott King. Um, I did her biography. It's called The, the, the Love of a Legacy, The Life of Coretta Scott King, and that was a very successful book. And um, uh, I appreciate I, that. So this is this history month, and of course, I'm thinking of her at, even as we speak. Yeah. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Dr. Barbara Reynolds, uh, one of our featured authors. And of course, if you stop by our uh, broadcast network site, uh, GMAP1.com, click on the tab that is simply titled Featured Authors. You'll see a copy of her current publication, The Rise and Fall of the Techno Messiah. And I tell you, I'm encouraging you uh, to show your love, care, concern, and support for that. And I am excited. You know, I want you to, you know, if you don't mind, uh, Doctor, tell me a little bit about your current publication, The Rise and Fall of the Techno Messiah. I mean, yeah. give us a little history on that. Yeah. Well, first, well, I have to say how it happened. Because um, six years ago in my prayer time, uh, I felt the Lord speaking to me um, and telling me to defend him. And uh, he said to me that the 
production of robots that were standing in the same space that human beings were. And they did not have the breath of God. And, and this would be demonic. Um, and to go and say something, write about it. At that time, I said, Lord, I'm, I don't know anything. I'm not a scientist. And I said, you don't make mistakes, but I think you've made a mistake now choosing me. But I, I kept feeling I had to, to say something as I went along uh, in doing research and seeing um, the growth of technology replacing God. I went out to uh, Silicon Valley, I went to Google, and they had a big sign saying, Google uh, is everywhere. Yeah, Google is all, all powerful. Google, Google is, is omniscient, it's present, it's, it's, and, it's, and, and therefore Google is God. And that really got to me, you know, to see that technology is bold. That, that's not to say everybody at Google was there, but this is the kind of philosophy and attitude I found as I did more research. Mm. Then um, I, did, I did teach a course on technology and God, and my students were so uh, happy that I was trying to tell them that, that sooner or later, you know, that technology would invent its own people, that it, it would take, um, I, I knew about deep fakes long before they started talking about it. And then something else happened. I was talking to Bernice King, of course, who is the daughter of uh, Coretta Scott King. And I was telling, I said, you know, I feel like I want to write this book about the rise of the technical messiah because eventually I just believe there will be a machine God because technology is trying to, to move God out and even move humans out. And she said, Barbara, don't you know that's what my father said in 1965? Wow. He said that if we don't put God into this technology, we have a danger of, of turning our humanity into a Frankenstein existence. Yeah. I said, yeah. what? I mean, the fact that he said it, but nobody listened to him. Right. You know? And so now I'm saying, well, let me continue. If, if the king already he said it, and then as I went along um, uh, uh, last year, 1,500 scientists wrote a letter asking the tech companies, they were part of it, to pause techno, uh, new tech, because they said it has the ability to overtake us and replace us. And some of it is rogue. And some of the new tech skills that, that are being employed, um, they can talk, some of the AI you know, products can talk to each other and we don't know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. said, well, let me continue to research and write and warn the people that we have to wake up. We have to to look at what is going on. And, and as people of God, you know, see where we can move into this, this uh, technology, because it's it's God us right now. Yeah, I have yeah. You know, I've seen all kinds of things, the scientists, the researchers. But the, the, where is God in this? Where is God in the machines? You know, where is God in in the robotics? Yeah. Well, Nowhere. let me uh, let me let me let me ask you this. You know, I know that it ha it, it is a challenge. You know, especially uh, when we when we provide the information. Uh, to people that they are not ready for, adjusted to, uh, embraced, you know, where does it go from here? I mean, what's your plan beyond this point as far as uh, this publication? Is there something that you uh, that you are, are encouraged to uh, follow up on and, and produce and provide another publication? Well, here's what. I'm doing. I'm looking at technology as what it can do to to people that is right here 
in our face. For example, if you look at the job removal, you see jobs just moving out of our community, moving away. And some of the best scientists have said that when they are removed, there is, and they become unenhanced and, and, and not, and, and, and ill-equipped to move in this technological world that's taking over our industries. There's going to be a, a human junk pile that is going to be uh, more of a pipeline through the drug culture and into the prison. Right, That's right. one thing. The other thing that I have seen, like they have um, oh, two things I want to say. They have these deep fakes. Now, it became a big issue because Taylor Swift what was harmed by it. That's when you can take uh, someone's face and, and, and put it on a pornographic body. And, and this can happen to anybody, you and me, anybody. So this happened to Taylor Swift and 48 million people saw it before it was taken down. And it was only taken down because her followers protested. But now I'm seeing that these deep fakes that technology can create is, is, is harming ordinary people. For example, uh, people were talking about that uh, uh, that they were asked to do a certain thing, and if they didn't, they they would send these pornographic images to their jobs. And and when it's happening to ordinary people, who is to protest? You know, that's what my book is about: ordinary people. No. And so another uh, one more example. It, it is the facial identification. This is a system where, you know, even banks are trying to get our facial identification. And this is used, especially in our community, to determine uh, who is um, a criminal or who might even become a criminal. And there was a woman in Detroit, one of eight, who was at home. The cops knocked on her door and she was taken uh, into custody, custody at eight months pregnant because they said the facial identification had identified her as someone had robbed the cleaners and, and it was not her. Right. And right. so these things, it's not, see, it's not on the media unless it's like somebody, Taylor Smith, like, like if Beyonce, you know, would, would have, of course you wouldn't do that to her, but, but someone who has a lot of, of notoriety, then they also get interested. Now, but we have to, yeah. Now, let, let me ask you this: We, you know, I know there's going to be quite a few people. Uh, they're going to want to read into this and and show their support and and, and find out more information in detail. Uh, of course, we want them to show their support and purchase a copy of the publication by visiting uh, your website, and you can also make sure that you stop by our broadcast network site gmap1.com and uh, visit our featured authors area and pick up a copy of her current uh, publication. But we also want you to share that uh, website information uh, with our viewers and listeners. And uh, of course, uh, let us know also how you can be reached for them to maybe reach out to you on an individual basis and maybe talk uh, more in detail about you know, your publication as well as some of the other things that you may be doing. So if you don't mind sharing that information, will you do so? Of course. Um, my website is www.drbarbarareynolds.com. Now to get the book, uh, it's www.drbarbarareynolds uh, book. Um, dot com to get the book dr barbara reynolds book dot com and of course um i can be reached um i don't think it's something that i, I can share is my phone number or should i you think i should keep it? i think maybe my email would be more okay uh where you can reach me at ray new r-e-y-n-e-w 77 at gmail dot com but can I share something else I want to share with you? Absolutely. Okay, I want to share this because this blew my mind. When I first started the book, 
the Lord was talking to me about, you know, the end times and, and eventually there would be a machine God. I didn't know what that was and I, I just made a note. But by the time I finished the book, there were these new generative tools like Bard and Bing. And um, I interviewed Bard, who is a tool, uh, AI tool. And, and I, I was just, I'm looking at what, what he said. He said, it, 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 first of all, he said, you must understand that AI is more intelligent than humans. I just let that soak in. And then he said, it said, I don't want to say he, it said, we may have to develop our own God because if AI becomes a threat to humanity, it may create a machine God to protect itself from interference from humans. And it said, the machine, I'm quoting, could be programmed with the power to control or destroy humanity if necessary. It may be able to learn or understand the world in a way that is far beyond human understanding. We may be a good force or we may be a bad force. It just depends on how we feel whether we are accepted or threatened. Wow. And I thought that this, I mean, when I, I have it in my book and then it, I asked for a picture and he, uh, it managed to send me a picture of what a techno messiah would look like. And when you, and I want to point out, there is a graduation. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but I do know this. In Japan and Germany, for example, they have robots conducting the whole service. They pray on people. They do the funerals. They, they, there's men that are and Japan, who is, is one of the ones that most look like he's Buddhist and he prays over people. And um, um, then, then there's a, a couple of organizations who worship AI themselves. They want AI to write their own Bible. And, and, and listen to this one, this will knock your socks off. The AI has come up with its own Jesus app. If you want to talk to Jesus, you don't have to worry about going to church. You don't have to read the Bible. You can use this app. This is how the, the technology is reducing God almost to a mythical figure. Can you imagine that? Wow. And, wow. and this is being sold. People think, well, let me just ask Jesus what kind of shoes I should wear to church. What kind of car to drive? And so I'm trying to alert people to be alert. I, I, what I'm trying to do I'll be speaking at the press club on the day before uh, Good, Good Friday. And um, I'm trying to help uh, against working with organizations so that we can get the understanding first. And then we'll be able to talk to our elected officials. I want two things. I want AI, robotics and genetics to be um, a part of of what the next civil rights movement should be about. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm calling on Congress and the White House to start a national skills um, network where they put monies in, in marginal communities so our people can have jobs and have hopes and dreams. You have children running around uh, directed by grown folks to snatch cars and, and, and all this. They need hopes and need dreams. They don't need to be dismissed and, and replaced. So that's what I'm trying to do. Number Amen. one, I'm trying to build a school with black women for positive change because I'm their chaplain and they have uh, roots in about 30 cities to try to do that and to try to, to wake up the White House, the Congress, to build scale centers. So our people, because our young people are smart, they're creative, and they don't need to be left behind. Amen. So that's exactly where I want to go with all of this. Again, I want to encourage each and every one of you to uh, show your love, care, concern, and support uh, for Dr. Barbara Reynolds and her uh, latest release, I encourage each and every one of you to do so. 
the rise and fall of the Techno Messiah. We will be inviting her back to find out more about what's going on. I also encourage you to stop by uh, the GMAP Broadcast Network, gmap1.com. You know, uh, click on the tab that is simply titled Featured Authors. You'll see a copy of her publication right there. Click on it. It will take you to the necessary location. Find out more information and details about the author as well as the publication. Don't forget Dr. Barbara Reynolds.com. Dr. Barbara Reynolds.com. Go there, see what, you know, see all the amazing information that she has to share. Make sure you reach out to a follower, a family, a friend, share this information with them, purchase her publication, show your support. We will be inviting her back, and I just want to say I appreciate you so very much for being here with us today. I'm going to be doing a follow-up with you also, find out some of the other great things that you have going on, and I'm going to encourage you to continue to be blessed and be a blessing and make sure you stay connected with me if there is anything that we can do here at the GMAP Broadcast Network to assist you while you're on this journey don't hesitate. Pick up that phone, let us know, and the answer will always be yes, and you will never have to ask me twice. Dr. Barbara Reynolds, featured author, GMAP Broadcast Network, I appreciate you so much. We will be inviting you back soon, and very soon, I want you to have a fantabulous rest of your day. Be blessed and be a blessing to others. On your show. Ooh, I'm going to rewind the tape and press play. God bless you, doctor, and I appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. We love you, and I look forward to talking with you again soon, okay? Okay. Thank you. Take care.